Ladies and gentlemen, my name's Paul. Hopefully you're having an amazing day. I want to kick this video off discussing AMD's RDNA-free based architecture. These upcoming products are said to be absolutely ridiculously powerful, and the company, of course, are set to reveal them as well as release them later this year. But AMD, or more specifically, one of their engineers, has accidentally let the cat out the bag a bit early for several crucial details, and we'll get into it right after this message from the video's sponsor. If you're running a copy of Windows 10, which isn't activated, of course, not only do you have to worry about the missing customization options, but there's also that annoying Windows desktop watermark reminding you to activate. Today's video is sponsored by whokeys.com, and they have an excellent price on Windows 10 Professional, as well as home keys. Yeah, and they also, of course, sell games. I bought a few Windows 10 keys with my own personal account to test everything was legit and worked in preparation for this sponsored video. You can pick up one of their keys for 25% off using the coupon code RGT in the checkout. There's links to their website in the video description. Also, if you're building a few systems, there's bundles available too. Again, you can check out whokeys.com and use the coupon code RGT for 25% off the listed Windows 10 key prices. Most of you at this point know one critical component of RDNA 3, or more specifically Narve 31 and 32, which are the uh, GPUs which will power the highest end SKUs, and that is that it's going to be utilizing a chiplet-based technology. AMD have already shown us this with CDNA 2, of course, and quite honestly, these GPUs, Narve 31 in particular, are going to be ridiculously powerful. The rumor mill has said that there will be two types of chip, basically, I'm simplifying things a little here, on the GPU. And the first is going to be MCD, which is basically the kind of infinity cache, if you will. And it is um, actually using the 6NM process for production. 5NM, meanwhile, will be the GCDs, and these will basically be um, housing the work group processes of the GPU. Remember, RDNA 3 has changed quite a bit, and we're no longer going to see the compute unit, as it were. So there's going to be some major architectural shifts there. But basically, AMD themselves have never confirmed this. They've simply said that uh, Narve 3 x is going to be utilizing advanced processors, and obviously you can infer that A, that's going to be 5NM, since that's going to be the latest and greatest architecture from TSMC. But now there's a very interesting post on LinkedIn. The engineer in question is Brian Walters, and you can see, well, a lot of uh, work that he's put into AMD products, and his projects have included uh, Vega 10, Vega 11, 12, Narve 10, 12, 14, 21, 22, 23, 31, 32, and finally 33. But you'll notice something very interesting when you're looking at Narve 31, 2, and finally 33. The first is that Narve 33 is only using the 6NM process. So this actually matches, of course, what myself and others such as Grayman have leaked on the internet multiple times at this point. Basically, it's only using one process and it's going to be essentially a monolithic die. So yeah, the Infinity Cache, the shaders, cache, everything basically is going to be packaged pretty much the same as what we have with a traditional chip such as Narve 20. 21, obviously just utilizing a different um, process. It's the 6NM rather than 7NM, and there will be various other enhancements because obviously it's a new architecture. But what this also confirms is that 31 and 32 are indeed utilizing chiplets, and basically we can see that, well, it almost certainly at this point proves that the leaks that have been going around the internet, including from myself, are accurate in that we're seeing two different types of chips basically on the GPU. Now, additionally, we recently were discussing the fact that there could also be a machine learning chiplet, which is in RDNA 3, more specifically 31 and 32. I've got to say, I, I don't know if this is true. Um, we were kind of covering this just recently, and I personally don't know if this is true. I am trying to do some investigation with some of my sources. Uh, one person so far has come back to me and said that no, it's basically just built into the silicon pretty much the same way as AMD have currently done. So it's not actually a separate chip or anything like that. It's not like a separate chip lit, or should I say, it's not a separate package. That's the best way of putting it. 
but another person has basically said that there are major improvements in RDNA 3's machine learning capabilities and I'm basically trying to verify so I'll put out another video hopefully soon-ish. But getting back to the topic here, this is going to be a very interesting battle I suspect with AMD and NVIDIA and I believe that NVIDIA are going to definitely want to change the messaging around reviews quite a lot and I suspect AMD will do much the same. Honestly, if you recall back to when we saw the products like the, um, you know what, a very easy example actually would be, remember how when the original Zen launched and we saw like 1700X and, uh, you know, it going against like the 7700K and how there was like AMD and Intel both pushing their own variation of like the messaging of like Intel being like, look, look how far behind the 1700X is, for example, in games and AMD being like, look how much we stomp Intel for Cinebench and, um, you know, all of this other stuff. So I suspect that it's going to be quite similar. Uh, with discussions around ray tracing, upsampling, and a lot of other stuff, quote-unquote, going forward. And it will be a very curious thing as well to see what the pricing is. Uh, just to reiterate, guys, I believe that uh, AMD are probably going to be more expensive than uh, NVIDIA in the next generation. I don't know that for a fact, but I've had two people tell me that this is almost certainly true, and another one implying heavily that it is. And it makes sense given that AMD are probably going to have a performance advantage. So it'll be very interesting to see how all of this shapes up. And now we're going to move over to Intel, specifically news on their discrete GPUs as yet another benchmark has leaked. We've already seen one benchmark which basically seems to indicate that the desktop highest end SKU is going to be roughly on par with NVIDIA's RTX 3070 Ti. But now we have another couple of leaks actually one for mobile and one for desktop and these are of the 300 series basically it seems to infer that the desktop part is going to be just over 20 percent faster than the mobile now it is imperative to realize that a these are engineering samples and b well there are issues with drivers and stuff yet i mean i'm guessing because the products are not actually released and the final thing is that we don't know whether these are going to be like you know variations in clock speed so it'll be interesting to see whether this turns out to be 100 percent true but it looks quite likely that intel are basically going to be power limiting the mobile variants of these chips which does make some level of sense so essentially we have a product here which is pretty much on par with a gtx 1650 from nvidia now i grant you that this is not hugely impressive but you need to remember that well fi first of all this is not final product as we just mentioned a moment ago and secondly this is the lowest end SKU and obviously Intel have products which are significantly faster than this and I think that if you're not necessarily doing high-end gaming that's absolutely okay like you know if you're playing the likes of Counter-Strike or League of Legends or Warcraft or whatever this is a fine amount of performance and I think, too, the other thing that Intel will be pushing heavily, of course, is their own upsampling technology. Now, it'll be really interesting to see how good the upsampling technology is when we finally get our hands on the blasted thing. I'm really curious to mess around with it. I am hearing it's very good. And, you know, these products, at the end of the day, seem to have, you know, faced a lot of delay from Intel. Um, you know, I've had multiple people tell me that the uh intel arc products were basically supposed to be like the debut of uh, tsmc's 6 and m and uh, well that hasn't happened and i'm hearing that there have been multiple reasons for the delay uh drivers being one of them and you know i think intel are doing the right thing delaying the product as long as it's necessary to get the product out and have it working and yeah, okay, we know that Lovelace or RDNA 3 are going to launch later this year and they're going to be significantly faster. But I, I think Intel are doing the correct thing, not trying to beat AMD or NVIDIA in the performance game the first time round. Instead, just getting a product out at a decent price, and that is key, of course. A, price. B, um, well, stability and all of that jazz. And C, availability. Now, if Intel can hit all three of those and a decent amount of, you know, goodwill from gamers will be built, I suspect that that will translate very well to the next generation. 
And I, you know, I'm actually really rooting for Intel at the end of the day. Like, I love Radeon products, I love Nvidia products, but as I've said a trillion times at this point, we need additional competition. And it's great that Nvidia and uh, AMD have told us that they feel that they can have much better product availability for the next generation, but I also rather like the idea that uh, Intel are going to have their offerings as well. And, you know, just to reiterate what I've said multiple times at this point, I suspect that NVIDIA are going to be facing a ton of pressure in mobile. Um, and it's going to be very interesting to see what direction NVIDIA goes, particularly with the ARM deal, which possibly won't go through at this point. Like, it's very much like, it doesn't look like it's going through, but NVIDIA have also not said anything. So, who knows? But all I can tell you guys is that Intel are really getting ready and they've also been on a huge hiring spree as well by hiring thousands of engineers and you know just yesterday we were talking about how much um, extra cash Pat Gelsinger has thrown into research and development at Intel and I think that it's definitely a good sign for the company going ahead um, however let's just not kid ourselves amd at the moment are performing absolute miracles in cpus as well as gpus so while i think intel can in this round anyway get a lot of goodwill and they can definitely kind of score a lot of brownie points with gamers especially if everything kind of works out well but obviously they're not even going to be fighting nvidia and amd in the highest stakes games but when the next generation of arc comes out who oh boy <laughs> it'll be very interesting with that said thank you very much for checking out the video if you have enjoyed it then of course you know what to do leave a likey on the video and subscribe if you've not already done so with that said thanks very much for watching take care of yourselves have a good day bye for now